Hey everyone, this is Kamran and today we're going to talk about async await. Async await is a way to write asynchronous code in JavaScript. There are multiple different ways of writing the asynchronous code. We used to have ES5 with the callbacks, in ES6 we got the promises and then with ES7 we got the async await. Async await is just a better way of writing the promisified code. In this lesson we will be mainly focusing on the async await but I will be briefly touching on the callbacks and the promises as well just to make sure that we are all on the same page. Alright so first of all we have the callbacks. In the callbacks we used to have the asynchronous function which would accept a set of arguments and the callback and it would call the callback once it was done processing whatever it was supposed to do. Let's say that we have this function called fetch user and once it is done fetching the user we need to display the user on the screen. So for that we can pass a callback where we have display user by passing the user object. Now let's say that in the user that we get from the API we have the creator ID. And now we need to display the creator of this user as well. So for that once the fetch user is done fetching the user we'll have one more callback called fetch user and we will pass the creator ID. And once we have the creator, we will display the user with the creator. Later on, let's say that now we are required to add the image as well. So we will add one more callback called fetch image and we will modify the display user to show the image as well. Now if you look closely at this function, we have a lot of callbacks. And whenever we need to add more functionality to the user, we end up adding more and more callbacks. So we have a callback called fetch user within the fetch image within the fetch user. So a lot of callbacks. So we end up with a callback hell. To improve on the callbacks, ES6 came with the promises. So we could write the same function that we have in the form of callbacks like this. So now we have the fetch user which returns the promise, then we fetch the image. And then once that is done, we fetch the creator and after that we display the user. Now if we do the comparison between this promised version with the callback version that we had before, in the callback version we had this deep nesting of the callbacks. And whenever we had to add more functionality, we ended up with more and more callbacks. But in the promised version we have this nice chaining of the functions and whenever we need to add more functionality, we just add dot then to add more and more functionality. ES6 also introduced a couple of other API methods in the promises that helped in writing more efficient asynchronous code. We will not be talking about the promises in depth in this video but I have one more video on this channel in which I go into much more detail about the promises. I would recommend you to go and check that out. Alright so let's look at this promised version that we had before. Let's say that we need a function called get user. We pass it the user ID, it fetches the user and displays the user onto the screen. Now let's say that we were required to display the user only if it is public. So let's say that we create a new function called display public user. We pass it the user ID, it gets the user with the user ID and dot then we have this check and then we display the user. Now if you look at this two functions that we have, we still have a lot of callbacks. In the fetch user we have dot then to fetch the image, dot then to fetch the creator and then in the display public user we have this dot then to put the check and display the user. So even if we don't have these deeply nested callbacks from the callback hell, we still end up with a callback and dot then whenever we need to use value from the promises. So we can say that we now are in a promise hell. What if there was a better way to use the promises? What if we could write the asynchronous code in the form of synchronous code? Async await allows you to do that. So let's say that we focus on the display public user for now. If we were to write this without dot then and in the form of synchronous code, we will have something like this. So const user is get user and then we can use the user object however we want. To make it possible, we need to put await in front of the promise call and in front of the parent function, we need to put the async. So what happens in this case is whenever JavaScript come across an await statement, it is going to wait for the promise to be resolved and then once the value is received, it can move on to the next steps and the rest of the execution. Now this was a small function. Let's look at the get user function and see how we will convert this into the async await version. So we have fetch user here which returns the promise, fetch image returns the promise and fetch user again returns the promise. If we convert this to a synchronous code, we will have something like this. And now to get the actual values, we will put await in front of each of the promises and we will put async in front of the get user function. Now when this function will be executed, it will come across the user. It is going to wait for the promise to be settled, move on, wait for the image, move on, wait for the creator and then continue with the rest of the execution. 
Now if you compare this async await version with the callbacks or the promises code that we saw before, you can see that our code base is much simpler and easier to extend. We will learn more about it in a bit when we look at the practical examples and convert some of the promisified code into the async await version. Alright, so now that we know about the async await and we know how to convert a promisified code into the async await, let's look at some of the things that you should know or some of the pitfalls you should avoid when writing async code. Here I have a simple function which is returning 10. If I use console.log to print the value to the console, the output will be 10. But now let's say that we put async in front of the function name. Now you might be expecting the value to be 10 because there is no asynchronous code within this function. But the actual output of this script is going to be a promise. And the reason for that is because whenever you put async in front of a function, even if you don't have any asynchronous code within the function, the function is going to return a promise instead of the actual value in there. And to get the value out of the promise, you need to use dot then or put await in front of the function call. Next, await can only be used within an asynchronous function. Let's say that we have this function called getUser. Inside that we are making a call using fetch to fetch the user from some remote API. Now to use this function getUser, we cannot put await outside any asynchronous function. To use this function, we have to do a promise call with dot then or use an ify, which is an anonymous function that calls itself, which is asynchronous. And inside that we are making the call using await. Another common mistake that most of the people who start using async await is using the map, reduce, for each, and filter functions. Let's say that we have this fetch users function where we have a roles array and then we are iterating through the roles array using the map function and inside each iteration we keep pushing to the users array by awaiting on the fetch users by role function. Now when you run this function you might be expecting the users array to be the list of users but instead what you're going to get is a empty array. The reason for that is our parent function fetch users does not wait for the await of the fetch users by role because the await that we have inside the map it is tied to the async function that is anonymously being passed to the map and not to the fetch users to get the expected result we need to use the for loop so either using the for in as we are doing here or we can go with the traditional for loop using the counter as well and now we are going to get the expected result because our await is tied to the fetch users function and not to any anonymous function inside this function Next we have a note on the parallel calls. Let's say that we have this get users function and we have an await to fetch users using the admin role. Then we have the fetch users using the guest role and then we are fetching users with the role member. Now in this case let's say that our each function is taking 2 seconds to get the results from the API. Our function is going to take 6 seconds because it is going to wait for admins for 2 seconds then wait for guests and then wait for the members. Now since each of these requests do not rely on each other, we can run them in parallel as well. So for that we can use promise.all. Now we are running all these requests in parallel using the promise.all and we have just one of it. And now the request is going to take 2 seconds instead of 6 seconds. And next, if you have the await as the last statement in the function, you don't need to put the await. So this function is equivalent to this function. And finally we have the error handling. Let's say that we have this function called display user and we are making a call to fetch the user from some API. Let's say that this fetch user API call fails, maybe because of the network issues or maybe the user was not found. In the current case it is going to be thrown as an exception as you might get in the synchronous code. To catch this error you can wrap this function within the try catch block and now you will get the error in the catch block, we will log the error and we will return null. We can also write this function as this as well. So we have the await fetch user and we have the dot catch from the promised version and we are logging the error using console.error and we are simply returning null when there is error fetching the user. So in this case if the fetch user is successful we will get the user object in the user variable. If not we will get the null from the catch block. Alright so now that we have covered everything let's look at some of the examples. So here in the example 1 I have a function called print to do which accepts an id and then it fetches from the remote api with the given id a to do and dot then we check if the response is ok we use rest.json which returns a promise and then we have another dot then which we print to the console the to do that we fetch. Now if I run this function you will see that in the console we will get the to do that is going to be fetched from the api. Now let's say that we want to write this function with the help of async await. You can pause this video and go ahead and try to write it by yourself. 
but here is how it is going to look like so i have a function called print to do dot then is now removed and we have the await to fetch the response from this api we get the rest if the response is okay we go ahead if not we throw the error and then we have another await on the rest or json to get the json object from the response now if we run this example you will see that we have the same result as before moving on we have the example 2 in the example 2 we have this synchronous function called get sum which accepts two numbers number 1 and number 2 and it returns the sum of both these numbers if i print to the console we will get the 3 as a sum of both numbers as expected but let's say that we put async in front of this get sum function so if we go here we have same function with the async now if we run console.log get sum with both the numbers we're going to get the promise in here because async is going to turn this function into a promise and to get the value, we either have to go with the get sum dot then to consume the value, or we have to use await. So let's see what do we get when we run this example. So as you can see, for the first output, we get the promise, and for the second and third, we get the actual value. Next, we have example three. So we have the same function called fetch to do to get the to do from the remote API. And inside the get to do's function, we have a list of IDs, and then we have IDs dot for each. Inside that we have the async function where we await for the fetch to do and we keep pushing to the to do's array the to do's that we get. Now if we run this example you will see that in the result of this function we are going to get the empty array. So we have the empty array as expected. And the reason for this is because this await is tied to this async. So when you run this function it goes through this, this, it goes through the for each and it will keep running all of these promises in the parallel and it will come below to the this return and we're going to get this empty array as a result to get the actual values from this awaits so we have to go with the simple for loop so we have for const id of ids and then we are awaiting for the fetch to do with the given id and now if we run this you will see that in the console we get all the to do's in example 4 again we have this fetch to do function that fetches the to do from the remote api with the given id and in the get to do's function you will see that we have the multiple awaits here the way it is going to run is it is going to run to do one wait for the response from the api once it has the response move on to the to do five wait for the response move on to the to do two wait for the response and then return the results now let's say that this api call took two seconds this took two seconds again and this took again two seconds now this function is going to take two plus two plus two six seconds in total to get the response from here let's run this example and see what do we get in the response so we get all the to do's from this function calls let's say that we want to run them in parallel so we can write the same function as this so we are awaiting on promise.all it is going to run them all in the parallel and we're going to get the results in only two seconds so we get the same results but it's much faster than the previous version in example 5 we have this fetch to do function again we pass it the id and we get the to do from the remote api and here we have a function called get to do by id which is calling fetch to do and we have the await as the last statement and here we are consuming this promise and we are printing to the console the to do that we get from the api if we run this function no issues we get the to do from the api but we can write the same function that we have here without the last await as well so we can write the same function without the async and await and if we run this we're going to get the same results and finally we have the example 6 showing the error handling here we have a function called promise that fails to simulate the promise rejection and inside the main function we have promise that fails dot then and then we are catching the error and we are showing the error to the console if we run this you will see that we are getting the error in the console as expected because the promise is always failing now let's see how do we handle errors in case of the async await. So in the after.js we have the same function called promise that fails. And inside the main function now main function is async. Inside that we are awaiting on the promise that fails. Now when we are awaiting on the promise that fails we are going to get the error inside the catch block here. So let's see if we call the main function and if we run this function what do we get in the output. So as expected we get the inside the catch. And then we have the error message after that. We can write the same function without the try catch as well. So the other way to write this is this. So we have await 
promise that fails and we can also put dot catch in front of it and inside the catch we can do whatever we want with the error and we can also return the default values so in this case if the promise that fails was successful it is going to get the value returned by that function into the result object if not it is going to get whatever you return from the catch block so let's say that we call main2 function now and if we run this now you will see that we get the default value and that is all for this one i have mentioned the link to the repository in the description if you have any questions or comments leave them below and i will see you in the next one